Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Open Education Network's Manifold community. This is your friendly orientation to what it is we are working on together with the Manifold publishing platform. My name's Karen. I'm Senior Director with the OEN. I facilitate community sessions like this one. I'm also a maker in my personal and professional life, and so I have a lot of um, understanding of what it takes to create a book or other project. Uh, as I mentioned before we got started, I'm really into native plants and wildlife habitat gardening, and I'm also starting to draw a bit um, and explore cartooning. I'm joined today by Jamie. Would you like to say hello? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Jamie Whitman. I'm the Open Educational Practices Specialist with the OEN, um, and I help Karen uh, co-facilitate communities like this. And then as you can see, I'm also a musician. So I do some different types of making on uh, my own uh, personal time. And um, I also really love to hike. And somebody mentioned the fall foliage. We just went on a beautiful hike this weekend and saw some waterfalls with all the beautiful leaves. So it was really wonderful. Thanks, Jamie. Um, we share this information about ourselves as a reminder that you know, we are whole people beyond what we do at work, and the same is true for all of you. And so we always try to keep that um, close to heart and never never have conversations as though you are just a machine doing these things. Um, and so it's always nice to get to know you a little bit in the chat as well. So uh, this is your opportunity to meet our Manifold community. Believe it or not, in a very short amount of time, we now have people in our community who are working at more than 80 institutions. That includes people who are, as we say, Manifold curious. Um, you don't have to have a project to request a login to Manifold. You can just request a login and look around and see what it's about. That said, we also have members who are publishing, who've published some really cool, exciting projects. So um, I encourage you to look around at our collections and see what people have been up to. We started with a much smaller Manifold pilot group. This was a group of bold individuals who agreed to join us and experiment with Manifold. Um, and some of those people are joining us today and they're all in the Google group so they can share with you what they've learned. We've also been extremely fortunate to be joined by Terrence Smyre and Robin Miller. They're both deeply involved in Manifold development and the Manifold community more broadly outside of the OEN and they've been very generous with their time, expertise, and support as we've figured out what it is we wanna do here together. And so um, we really benefit from their, their time and their generous spirit. So today's agenda uh, may be ambitious. As I mentioned, this is our first time doing an official welcome to the community, but what we hope to cover is a little bit of information about who we are, um, so you have a sense of who am I emailing when I email the Manifold Google group? Uh, what have they been busy doing? What are they wondering? Um, we also are going to share the Manifold community guidelines. Now, if you have been in the Manifold uh, community for a while, these guidelines have entered a bit of more of an official phase, if you will. And so we're gonna talk about um, our role, your role, and then ask that everybody agree to those roles which is really just meant to be an acknowledgement of what it is we're trying to accomplish here together. And then I'll hand things over to Jamie who will go behind the scenes and get into the nuts and bolts of how to get started with Manifold. So that is our plan. So at the very most fundamental level, why do we offer Manifold? Well, um, you may have heard me say many times before, we hope to support multiple publishing pathways. There are obviously so many faculty working in different contexts, um, wanting to reach different groups of students. And so there is an abundance of tools and not every tool is going to be able to do everything that we want. And so while we can't support every tool, we do hope to have a few robust options so that you can uh, experiment with publishing in a supportive place um, and have a few options depending on you know, what discipline your faculty are working in and what it is they're looking to publish. 
We also wanted to offer Manifold um, to enable more OER publishing, regardless of the resources that may be available at an institution. I just mentioned our pilot group, for example, and there was at least one person there who said, I would not be publishing at all if it were not for the Manifold pilot instance, and now Manifold as a benefit. So that's exactly what we were trying to do by offering Manifold is extend the opportunity, extend access to as many institutions as possible. So that's the philosophy underpinning the tool. So what does the OEN Manifold community do? Well, obviously we're publishing OER, that may be textbooks. I know at least one group is working on a journal. Um, you can create open pedagogy projects. I know of at least one that's in the pipeline. And while I'm, I'm talking about one or two projects, that's within the OEN instance itself. There are many examples outside of the OEN of people using Manifold for these projects. So if you're looking for examples, let us know. We can definitely point you to multiple. It's also, uh, excuse me, it's also possible to use Manifold as an open repository curation tool. Um, you can form public and private reading groups. And then of course, perhaps the most key role of our community is to support and inspire one another so that when you're trying to support your faculty, they have questions, you haven't been able to come up with an answer, you have somewhere to turn to, someone who may have been down that road before and is really happy to help you. Okay, I mentioned that we were gonna talk a bit about Manifold community guidelines, and this is where it begins. So your role as the member in our Manifold community is the publisher. You are responsible for the content that's being created in your collection. You're creating those projects, obviously thereby deciding what gets published, and you ensure that those projects, including images, are openly licensed. This may all seem a little pro forma, but for anyone who has worked to support OER publishing, for anyone who has previously um, run a program where perhaps you say, here's your publishing platform, you know, go to it. Um, you know intimately that there is often a lot of misunderstanding, there's a learning curve, and so it does take um, some close collaboration to ensure that the projects being published are openly licensed appropriately, that those images are attributed properly. So we're looking to you um, to ensure that kind of support with your faculty. You're their direct support and can consult with them on their projects. Now here's an example of one pilot group, Eastern Kentucky University. You can see they've already published four projects in a variety of disciplines. And you can see that there's one contact for this um, collection, and that person is local to EKU. So that if anyone had questions about the content here, if there was something um, perhaps they wanted to adapt or they wanted to collaborate with that faculty member, they would know who to reach out to um, regarding these publications. In terms of expectations for managing your manifold access locally, um, again, we do want you to consult with faculty before they begin creating. This will make your life much easier and um, it's much better to discover misunderstandings in the beginning of a project rather than at the end where either you or the author has to go back and remediate um, issues that are in every chapter. Instead, um, it's, it works really well to consult with someone before they go, begin creating. And then let's say after a first chapter or after a first resource is published to take a look, kind of check for that understanding. And then if you find some, something that is concerning in that first chapter, you can say, hey, I noticed this, you know, going forward, please be sure to you know, do it this way or to keep a list of the images that you're using in your project and so on. We have a ton of resources that can help you with this type of consultation. You do not need to create any templates or forms from scratch. Just let us know um, what you need and we can either point you there or we can find a way to develop it and support you. This is true too, of course, of ensuring that your faculty understand Creative Commons licenses. Um, we ask that everything published in the Manifold instance have a has a license that allows for editing. That said, um, exceptions may be made for student work. Open pedagogy has some special considerations. And so if you are looking to do an open pedagogy project, 
um, just let us know and we can definitely work with you. And please review the content that your faculty create, again, to check to see that everything's openly licensed or check for anything else that may not be aligned with what you had in mind when you gave access um, and started your publications. Here's an example of just a few of the projects University of Northern Iowa um, has created so far. They too were a part of our pilot. Uh, Anne Marie and the faculty she's worked with have been incredibly productive in a short amount of time creating these resources. Um, she's obviously in our manifold group. If you have questions about um, what she's learned, she's been so helpful so far. Um, and I encourage you to check out their collection. Okay, now in terms of the OEN role in the Manifold community, we are uh, perhaps obviously providing access to Manifold. Uh, we are supporting you as the one project creator at a member institution. We facilitate community support by offering sessions like these and other sessions that you say you may need. And if we find that a project does not align with community expectations, it is possible that we may unpublish something if we have concerns. This has not happened yet. We don't anticipate it, but um, just in case, we will uh, keep an eye on things and work closely with you before we might do something like that. But just uh, so you know, we wanna make sure that everything stays within the parameters of our community guidelines. In terms of where we are, uh, we are currently in a transition phase from the pilot when we had a small group of people working. <clears throat> to this larger benefit where any member of the OEN can uh, have a project creator in our Manifold instance. The official end date is March 1st, 2025. So if you are not a member, you will need to join the OEN for continued access. So let's say for example, you are at an institution that is a member of the OEN through a consortium, but you are not a direct member of the OEN you would need to join in order to have continued access to Manifold. The good news is that you can do that at a discount because of your membership in your consortium. And so just let us know if that's something you're interested in. Also part of the transition from the pilot to member benefit, anyone with access to Manifold will need to agree to our OEN Manifold community guidelines. That is um, a short Google form that just says you read, understand, and agree to what it is we're trying to do here as a community, as a collective. You will see me continue to communicate about those two things. Um, and so look for that in the Google group and um, let me know again if you have any questions. The complete guidelines are available in Manifold. Uh, they also cover member eligibility, Manifold roles, how to request access. So check it out. It's not too onerous. Uh, there's a lot of Q&A to kind of make it a quicker read. Uh, but if you do have questions, I'm always happy to answer them. And don't hesitate to reach out. Right before I hand things over to Jamie, I just want to mention in the spirit of shared abundance, which is one of the OEN's guiding principles, I am very happy to say that Robin Miller, who is at the City University of New York, often holds manifold sessions herself for CUNY faculty, and she has extended the invitation to anyone in the OEN. So if we don't cover everything today or you would like to hear it again, uh, Robin is offering an invitation, excuse me, is offering a session later this week. It's an introduction to a manifold workshop, and Jamie will put the link to that uh, in our chat. So feel free to join Robin and she will periodically forward information about upcoming sessions to our Google group. And we're very thankful that, that she's sharing her expertise with us. So that concludes my bit. Um, I'm going to hand things over to Jamie, who's going to talk you through getting started with Manifold. I'm going to stop sharing and just check in and see if there are any questions in the chat that may be unanswered that I can answer right now as Jamie's getting set up. There was one question that came in in the chat, uh, Karen, if you want to take that now before I start sharing. 
Is that how long will Manifold be free to use as part of the OEN? Yes, that was the one And I will missed. we be able to expand the amount of users in the future? Um, right now, the plan is if you're an OEN member, you have Manifold access. It's built in to your membership, and we have had no discussions about um, changing what that may look like in the future. Uh, that is aligned with our goal to support and enable uh, more uh, open content. Will we be able to expand the amount of users in the future? Um, we have not talked about that yet either, just because this is very early on in the benefit. Um, right now, we are sticking to the one project creator because uh, that feels scalable to us. And it's a way for us to share um, responsibility for the group so that we have one contact person, which is fairly similar to how we work more broadly in the OEN, and then you are working directly with your faculty. But absolutely, if it turns out that that's a major obstacle and we need to look at that again, we certainly can. Thank you for that question. Heather, I see your question about uh, student projects. I believe that you can uh, license things differently. Um, Jamie may know for sure. I know Terrence is also on this call and can correct me if I'm wrong, but I know that they do a lot of open pedagogy, so I, I would assume that that ability is there. Um, let's see. With one project creator, do our faculty have the ability to go in and write a book, or do I have to put content in for them? That will definitely be covered by Jamie, so I won't, um, I won't answer that question, but if you still have it at the end, or Jamie, do you want to go? Uh, we will get to that pretty shortly. So if you're okay with just holding on, uh, you know, just a few minutes, um, we'll get there. Yeah. And Patrick, what if an organization discontinues its OEN membership? What happens to its manifold collections? Um, we thought about this question when it came to the pilot, like, okay, so what if we get to the end of the pilot and, you know, people decide manifold is not going to be that useful to the community. What are we going to do for the people who have created projects? And they can be exported to an EPUB so that you can take them with you. Uh, you could work with the Manifold team if, let's say, you're leaving the OEN, but you want to keep using Manifold. I think there is a way to um, move projects between the two. Um, so we would definitely want to, to work with you on what that looks like. But it's another good question. These are early days, and so we would figure that out together and um, definitely hope to come to some kind of supportive understanding. Okay, and it looks like Terrence did just confirm about the CC license. Um, so just briefly to answer uh, the question about with one project creator and having to add text, um, that is depending on how you want to work within Manifold, that is certainly an option where you would upload text for them, but there is a role that is uh, that you can add to a faculty author at your institution, which allows them to have that creative ability. So you do not have to be within every single project uploading texts or or adding content. And I will um, show you how we get there. Uh, if we're ready to go ahead and start with our little bit of a tutorial uh, for Manifold. Uh, so the first thing I want to share is just that we do have some guides here uh, that are adapted from Robin's CUNY guides for getting started with Manifold. Um, so this will walk you through a lot of what we're going to look at right now during this tutorial. this They have screenshots in them, so it should be able to walk you through it very easily so you can get started with creating projects, um, adding text, and also adding those editor roles to your projects. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is just jump into something that we already have published in Manifold so we can look at the different layout that Manifold has to it. Um, maybe talk a little bit about the manifold jargon that's included in here, and then we'll look at that jargon on the back end. So you'll see where that all fits together. So these are some of our featured project projects that we have just on the homepage of the OAN Manifold community. So this is a, a textbook from the University of Northern Iowa and that's called Media and Power. And so what we're looking at right here is called the hero block. And so this is one of our manifold jargon terms here. Uh, this hero block is where you can, uh, a little bit of a description of sort of, uh, if you're familiar with Pressbooks, like the little cover display that you have when you first get onto a Pressbooks landing page, you can add your uh, cover image here, your book cover, if that's what you'll be using, if that's what you're publishing. You can also add these little buttons here for different options. Um, these are all customizable so they can, 
go to different things. Um, this book goes to a Google Drive of downloadable chapters for this textbook. Um, and then you can see they also have a link to a feedback form. Uh, here is their description. And then as we get into the project itself, content is broken up into a couple of different areas. The first is the texts area. So this is what you would consider a traditional textbook format. So we have front matter, an introduction to the handbook. Then as we go, these different modules of the textbook with different units, you can click into each one. Uh, these are uploaded all as individual texts to this project. Um, so as you scroll down, you'll be able to go through that module, the contents, then you can jump back into these different units within this module. And it'll t drop you right down to where it goes there. And the menu here will take you back to the home page. And there are different ways to design within Manifold. So we'll see some different options for how texts can be loaded either individually like this. So if you are working on one of those open pedagogy projects, this might be something you'll do so you can apply those individual Creative Commons licenses to student work. Um, or you can also have your text come in all as one text where you're jumping uh, like a traditional textbook um, through the chapters. Now scroll to the bottom here. The next section here is the resources. So these can be images, they can be interactive materials, it can be uh, videos, different types of media that you might want to associate with this publishing project that you have. And you can create these different collections based on modules, based on chapters, uh, based on particular topics. Uh, it's uh, the really nice thing about Manifold that it is that it is super flexible with how you use it and how you can design it. Um, so these are, once you jump into a collection, you'll see what the resource is here and then the additional resources that are a part of this particular collection. And then there's also just the collections of the different images here at the bottom, uh, which are a part of the uh, the five total collections of resources here. Uh, so again, module one, module two, and then it breaks it down as you go through each collection and what is included within them. And I'm gonna jump over to our collections. Uh, so you can see how we've set up these individual collections here. So we have each institution's collection laid out. As Karen mentioned, we have the individual person listed here for who you would reach out to. I'm going to jump into the Open Pedagogy Student Toolkit just so we can see another uh, layout version. So instead of having the texts individually uploaded in this particular text, it is all one text. So as you go through, this is more of a traditional textbook view. Uh, so you're scrolling through the entire textbook all at once. And using the contents, you can jump to different chapters within the textbook and it'll drop you right down to it. So there, like I said, there are a lot of different options and flexibility flexibility uh, within Manifold to really create what makes the most sense for a particular project. So now that we've seen some of the output for Manifold, I'm going to jump into the back end so we can look at how you can start creating these projects, how you can add folks to them, your faculty authors, so they can get involved, and some of the uh, other intricacies within Manifold. I am already logged in here, um, but if you needed to log in, you would just click on the little bubble up at the top here and log in. This is a project creator account that I'm in right now. So that is what we consider our manifold admins at each of our institutions. There's the one project creator. And you'll see this enter admin mode as soon as you log in. And this will jump you to the back end of your manifold session. Uh, so you'll see any projects that you have already created appear here. You can start working on journals. Like Karen said, we do have a couple of folks who are working on journals. They're not uh, published just yet. Um, but if that is something that you're interested in doing or che checking out, you can use this to go ahead and start a new journal. And then what we're going to do is actually create a new project. Um, and it's pretty simple to get started with. So you would just click on this Add New Project button here. intro to manifold as our title you can add a description a subtitle now there are a lot of different options for the layout here as we saw you, you have your text options you have the resources option um, there's also this uh, these other two blocks here where you can have additional space for your project 
um, or if you want to um, showcase the evolution of your project. So this is really neat for projects that are um, built over, over time. If you want to show how it changes, you can leave this button checked. All of these things can be changed. Um, what I would suggest is leaving them all as yeses for now. And that way, when you go back to your project, you can update them if you need to. They won't appear in your project unless you do anything to them. Um, so you'll be able to remove any that you don't want, but it makes more sense to allow for the text, allow for the resources, and any of those other um, descriptions that you want to have in there. Uh, so our project is, is created. So right now, if we were to view it, we would see that we've created this. Our project is born. Uh, we now have these different blocks that we can go ahead and update. Um, I think this is a really neat feature of Manifold, Manifold when you are in the admin mode. You can get to all of those blocks by using the layout button, these texts and resources here. Uh, but sometimes it's really nice to see what your project looks like and then say, oh, I need to add this information to this block and I can jump right into it uh, from here. And so this would be any information you want to um, add to the hero block. I'm going to close it so we can see it. So here is our hero block. That was that big block up at the top. You can add your description and images. Uh, so here's my description I entered before. If I had a background image I wanted to use, I could add that here, as well as a cover image. Um, and of course, Manifold allows for um, image credits. So you can ensure that you're using openly licensed image, licensed image or a licensed image that you provide that proper credit there. The calls to action are those individual buttons. Uh, so you can add buttons on the left-hand side of that hero block. And then you would add your URL here. If we go to view our project, we'll see that we now have this little button here. If we click it, it'll take you to that link that um, I put in there. And come back to our layout here to get back to our hero block. So these are all different options for how you want to customize uh, the content and the description of what your project is going to look like. You can also add social media links. So if you um, are using anything particular for this project, uh, Twitter, Instagram, or a hashtag, you can add that to your project as well. And then the content blocks are the uh, actual areas of content that you'll be putting in. So this is where we see the text, the resources that we might want to add. Those are the individual blocks if we view our project. We'll see our text here needs some content to be displayed. Same with our resources and then our metadata. Back here. And so again, to access that, you just come over to this layout tab here. And I'm going to turn off uh, this markdown box. Now, sorry, my video is in the way. And so if we come back again to view, I know there's lots of jumping around, which can be confusing, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll see that we can jump back into those areas to fix these content blocks. Uh, before I start adding any more information about the project, uh, the biggest thing I think you'll want to know as the project creator is the access piece of this. So this is adding those faculty authors so that they can be the ones to add any texts, add any resources, and edit the content that is within the project. So uh, what you would do is come over to this access tab here and grant editor permissions. What you'll need to do is have your faculty author create an account on the OEN Manifold site, uh, just like you did with your, your own account. And then uh, the one thing is you will have to go through all of the users that are associated with the OEN Manifold, uh, but you can just search by name and then you can give them uh, editing access by allowing them to modify a project, and it doesn't want me to add, maybe because you're an admin, I can't add you. But what you would do is you would select your person here, um, allow them to modify projects. Actually, I think I have another account. I have a lot of a lot of OEN accounts. Okay, um, so I can add myself or add a faculty author, allow them to modify the project, allow them to add uh, resource metadata and uh, say that they are an author for this project. 
I can save those permissions. And now I can see that uh, this person is a part of this project here. Uh, so once they make that account, they can log in as themselves and they'll have access to, depending on the permissions that you provide, um, but if you want them to be able to add their own texts and add their own resources, they will have access to this project that you create. And then they can jump into the text block, for instance, and start adding those texts or adding the content that they need to add. And same with the resources. And so additionally with the layout, uh, you can allow that to be up to the, the faculty author too, in terms of customizing the layout and adding the descriptions for the hero blocks. Uh, but it might be something that, um, that you get set up for the projects so that they have an idea of what they're jumping into. Uh, any questions so far, just sort of setting up the project, getting your folks into it. Um, I am gonna go through how you can upload text depending on the workflow that you have established. It might be something that you do as the project creator or at least want to have the knowledge of how to do uh, so that as you're working with your faculty, you'll be able to guide them through this. Process. Um, and again, these are all in the guides that are uh, the getting started guides in the Manifold community. Um, so there's a bunch of screenshots that really walk you through all of this. Um, I saw there were some things in the chat. I think Terrence has uh, kindly responded to most of them. Uh, Sonia thank is you, asking, Terrence. yeah, thank you, Terrence. Uh, Sonia is asking, I've not had the opportunity to work in the publishing realm yet. Manifold looks really straightforward and user-friendly, but I sense she's suspicious. Uh, am I underestimating the learning curve? Hard to answer. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, I don't, um, I don't think so, Sonia. Um, there are definitely, if you're used to using something um, like Pressbooks, there are some differences with how you get into the content. Um, Manifold has made some um, updates that allow for something like text editing actually within the, the platform, which it did not used to do. Um, so there have been some big strides made to make it a really user-friendly and intuitive platform. Um, so I definitely think it's something that um, once you start working with, you'll feel really comfortable uh, in. And I saw there's a question as I was answering. Oh, Terrence already got to it, so never mind. Yes, you can include H5P content um, within Manifold. Um, there's a couple more here. Uh, let's see. Can you say more about the Google Doc Pressbooks version links? Is this standard practice? I'm especially interested in the Google Doc piece. Is this just to have a more editable version? I'm also not sure what the markdown piece is. Please skip this if you're planning to cover it. <laughs> uh, so the the Google Docs or the Pressbooks version. So that is uh, it's not a requirement for having any project on Manifold. In the particular case that I showed with the University of Northern Iowa, uh, they wanted that book to be able to appear in the Open Textbook Library. Uh, the Open Textbook Library only accepts textbooks that also have a portable file format of some kind. So it could be an EPUB or a PDF. Uh, so by adding the Google Docs link to a PDF, the OTL is able to review that and check that off as part of the criteria. Um, so it's an option for um, being able to have that portable format, but it is, uh, as you mentioned, a way to make it more editable. So if somebody wants to adapt it, they could take that Google Doc version um, and work through there. And then if they want to use Manifold to host that version as well, they could upload their text um, that way. So it's not a, not a requirement, but that is uh, typically the way that we've seen those been used so far. And Janelle is curious to hear comparative reviews from users who have used both Manifold and say LibreText or Manifold and Pressbooks. Um, I mean, easy of use from an author perspective. Janelle, um, there is a comparison between Manifold and Pressbooks that the University of Washington put out and I'll find a link for that. And then there may be people in this call who could speak to that comparison as well. So I invite anyone who has been supporting faculty in different publishing platforms, what their take on things are. Uh, please uh, keep submitting your questions to chat. I'm gonna move into just the creating the texts um, so you can see how that process works. Uh, there are a couple of options for doing that. Um, and so, as I mentioned, with the, the man, Manifold projects that do have those downloadable uh, Google Docs um, 
you that is some something that you could use if you wanted to adapt a textbook that we have on the Manifold platform and then re-upload it as uh, your own. Um, you can do that. There's uh, some different ways to get text into Manifold. So the first is ingesting a text. Um, so that is where you would start with it if you already have a Word document that your faculty authors are have been working in or a Google Doc that they're working in. Um, you can see that you can ingest text in multiple file formats. Um, so you can use a URL for a Google Doc, an EPUB, or an HTML file. Uh, so this is really helpful if you're, you know, your process, your publishing workflow is for your faculty to work in a familiar text or a familiar tool first. So using uh, Word or Google Docs to start their project. Um, and then you can upload that project here and they are able to um, edit it within the Manifold platform. So if there are changes that need to be made, they can make them really easily once it's already uploaded. Um, and this gives them a tool to start working in that they're really familiar with first before jumping into something um, that they may have a little bit uh, more difficult time starting out with. I'm going to go ahead and upload a file. And so I don't, I know you can't see my finder, but I'm just using a Word document to upload right now. So this is just a docx file that I pulled from uh, my files. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. Um, so we've successfully connected. So I'm going to start the ingestion process. Just a second. All right, so we are complete. Uh, so we can see that my text has been uploaded here, so it's kept the title. Uh, we can view it right away, uh, right here. Um, so I used, I did use, um, I just saw there was a question about accessibility. So I did use headers and alt text within my Word document when I created it. So this is uh, using different header, heading styles here. So as you can see, um, when it read through this document and ingested it, it did keep my headings uh, appropriately. Uh, placed and with the appropriate tag so that it does follow accessibility here. Um, and so this is this is what the document looks like as it comes over. So this is the creating a new project guide. Um, so it has images, it has different URLs within it, um, and it automatically pulls those headings too because there are structured headings. It pulls those into a, um, a table of contents for you automatically. So that's a really nice feature too if you are uh, you know, keeping up with accessibility practices and standards and using those structured tags, uh, Manifold does read through those uh, from a Word document and is able to pull them through. I'm going to go back to our admin mode. Um, and you can always tell you're in admin mode because the screen goes dark. So if you're ever lost as to where you are, once you're in that dark screen, you are in um, your admin mode. I'm going to go back to my texts here. Uh, so that was just ingesting a Word document. Like I said, you can do Word documents, you can do EPUBs. Um, if you have a Pressbooks platform and you have an EPUB from a text that you want to test out in Manifold, you can download the EPUB for that and then ingest that as a text. Um, if you want to try out the Manifold editor, what you're going to do is click into that text. You'll drop down to this sections here. Sorry. And then we'll click on this little pencil button. And that will actually bring us to a rich text editor where we can edit the document in real time. So uh, previously, you would have to make edits outside of the document in the original source and then re-ingest that document. Um, and so now you can actually just make those edits directly within Manifold, which saves a lot of time and is a really nice feature. There's a rich text editor, so just uh, the text that you would normally see. And there's also an HTML editor. So you can add in um, other HTML elements that you might want to have within your within your text here. Um, so I've used this for, I don't think I have any in this one, but in some of the other ones using different bulleting options, I've been able to edit the HTML to design it in a way that I wanted it to look like. And then once you make those edits, you can save it and close it. And again, it will um, make those changes immediately and you'll be able to view it 
within your text section. Uh, so I'm back in our, our project backend, so just the intro to Manifold. I'm going to go ahead and view that now. Uh, and we'll see that my text block no longer has this uh, warning button here, but it does show the actual text that I have. There are ways to um, categorize text. Um, if you have them, different modules or different chapters, uh, or even different topic areas uh, that you're publishing, but it's not a standard uh, textbook that you're working on, you can categorize them and make those changes within, <clears throat> excuse me, within the text. Um, category within the text um, tab here. So you can create a new category. And then you can oops, drag your text right into that category. So you can set up multiple ways to organize your content. Um, and again, I think what is so nice about Manifold is how flexible it is and how customizable it is, even just from the, this project creator um, standpoint or the faculty author standpoint, there's lots of ways to organize um, and really customize the layout and how you want your um, Manifold project to look. And so now with our text, we do see that my uncategorized has changed back to uh, this new category name. Um, and then I think the other uh, big piece of um, information that folks are going to want to have is adding resources to the text. So this is adding any videos, any images, uh, HTML content, or I'm sorry, H5P content that you would want to add to your project. Uh, you manage it the same way that you do with the text. So you would drop down to this resource tab. Uh, you can add your new resource here. And you have all of these different options for um, pieces of interactives that you might want to add or resources that you might want to add. Uh, so you can add an image, you can add uh, interactive, which would be like H5P, uh, slide decks, spreadsheets, videos. Um, and this, again, the intro guides walk through all of this as well. Uh, so let's see if I have an image to use. Okay, so I've uploaded my image. I've given it a title. You can add a description here and hit save and continue. <clears throat> Give it a second to process here. Uh, and I, I can log in as my faculty author account in a second too, if you wanna see what that looks like. I might take a second for this to Uh, so it's a question about the citation. Um, so within that image, uh, there is oops, this metadata tab. So this is where you would add any of that um, copyright information that you would have. So licensing for that, um, you would be able to add that information here and it will appear with it. Um, there's a lot of metadata that you can add here. So there's also, um, and this is for all of the resources and texts too. You can add this information, publisher, bibliographic information. Um, accessibility is down towards the bottom here where you can add any alt text um, and then any additional um, information that you would add here. This is a really huge chart, so I'm not going to add all the information, but just so we can see what that looks like there.
Uh, so our image has come up. We can see the rights here, uh, the type of resource that it is. You can download it, uh, what data was created on, what the file format is, and the file size. And then there would, the, the alt text is um, within there as well. <clears throat> Uh, so any, any other questions about uh, texts or resources? Uh, when you get into adding the metadata for the project itself, it's just another tab on this table here. So you would add in all that information for the overall project. And then like we talked about with open pedagogy projects, you could have individual texts with those individual licenses associated with them. And what I will do is log out of this account. I think this one is my... Uh, so as a faculty author, instead of having that enter admin mode, you have this enter editor mode. And so I was added to this project. I can see I have two projects that I'm a part of. Uh, this is the one we were just working on, this intro to Manifold. Um, so I can come into the layout and edit the hero block, uh, just like I did as a project uh, creator. I can come into the texts and add my own text. I can go into a text that's already there and uh, be able to edit it if I want to. So um, once you add those permissions, your authors are going to be able to function, to have those same functionalities to really create the project themselves and work through it. Uh, so really, it doesn't look much different except for that they'll only see projects that they're a part of, whereas you as the project creator, if you have several different authors working on different projects, you would see all of those projects within your dashboard, uh, and your editors would only see those individual ones that they're attached to. So you can embed uh, resources, just go into it. It's in a text, um, what I'm going to do is actually go to our uh, guides. So you can take a look at that. So this is just under the, the collections. And then for the OEN down towards the bottom, we have the getting started guides. Uh, so I have my text organized into different um, categories. So I have projects, working on different projects, working with text and resources. So adding a text or adding and embedding a resource. I have two separate resources here, uh, a video on how to upload a text into Manifold, a video on using the Manifold editor. Um, and if you were to come into this adding a text, um, getting started guide, I do have a resource here. So that video about uploading a text, uh, what you can do is you can highlight a portion of um, your text here and you can add a resource directly into that area. Uh, so it's a little bit different than if you're used to adding videos or interactives within Pressbooks where it appears uh, on the page. This is another way to do it where it goes directly to that video uh, as a almost an annotation of that particular text. And then they can also be settled as resources in this resource collection area here. I'm going to put this link in the chat again too, just so you have have it here, but these are all of the resources and I'll be continuing to build out more too, especially if we have um, different questions coming in and uh, things that are a little bit tricky as we're working through them. As you're working through them and creating these publishing projects, uh, I can always add additional um, getting started guides. And uh, again, another big thank you to Robin for creating these for CUNY that I was able to adapt for us. Um, so they um, has been a really nice process to be able to go through uh, Robin's work and then add our OEN spin to them. Thanks, Jamie. I think we're caught up on questions in the chat. Um, there's ongoing discussion about LaTeX and whether it can be um, one of the ingestible files in Manifold. And let's see, Liz has a question. Is the project always live or is there a step to publish publicly? There is indeed. Um, you have to click a, a button. I, I don't know if it says publish, but it's a very clear, now I'm ready for this to be public button. Um, and you can you know preview it and see it in draft mode up until that moment. So um, 
Jamie mentioned, for example, that there are a couple of journals that are currently in production, uh, but we can't show you those yet because they haven't been published. So you have the, um, the control at your fingertips in that regard. Other questions for us before we wrap up here? Thanks again to Terrence who helped us manage the chat and answer so many of those as we went along. Okay, well, this is not your only chance. Uh, you know where to find us in the Manifold Google group. And to echo what Jamie just said, uh, if you do run into questions or if we start hearing of particular processes that are a little bit harder to get your heads around, we're very happy to create support for those. Um, Thank you for joining us in the last hour. We know that you have a ton to do and that this probably means you're thinking about publishing OER. And so we thank you for your work in that and look forward to supporting you. Um, I see Robin just turned her camera on. So hi, Robin. Um, again, Robin will be hosting a session, an introduction to Manifold Workshop later this week. And so if um, you would like more, Robin, uh, would like to see you. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that on your behalf, Robin, that you would like to see them there. I feel like it's safe to say. Okay, everybody. Uh, thanks again for joining us and see you soon. Thanks everyone.